Hey, what's up guys? Uh, Nick Boyd here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description for all my information. I do the premium problems on my Patreon, and you can join my Discord. Reach out to me. I'll try and respond to everyone. I uh, just woke up. This is uh, the first problem of the day. Longest palindrome. It is a easy problem. Got some likes here. Seems like a really good problem for anyone who doesn't know anything about palindromes, just wants to get into algorithms. This is a good, really, really good starting algorithm. I would recommend. Uh, given a sh yeah, let's just do it. Given a string which consists of lowercase and uppercase letters, usually it's one or the other, but we got lowercase and uppercase. Uh, find the length of the longest palindromes that can be built with those letters. This is case sensitive. For example, capital A, lowercase a is not considered a palindrome. Assume the given length of the string, uh, string will not exceed 1010. 10. Okay. Um, so if you guys don't know what a palindrome is, a palindrome, is, you might remember uh, something like race car is a palindrome. So basically a palindrome can be spelled forward the same way as it can be spelled backwards. So race car spelled forward is R-A-C-E-C-A-R. -E Backwards, it is also R-A-C-E-C-A-R. -E uh, so race car forwards is race car backwards. So what what is the, how do we do this? It says we want the longest palindrome that we can create from the letters in the string that we're given. So we're given in this input example, we're given A, B, C, 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 D, D. What is the longest palindrome we can uh, create with these? Uh, the answer is 7, because the longest is D. So you take one of the Ds, then you take two Cs, then an A, then two Cs, then a D. Um, so you can see this is spelled forward the same way as backwards. D, C, C, A, C, C, D, D, C, C, A, C, C, D. So... When approaching a problem like this, uh, I guess one thing that I should tell you guys, um, start telling you guys, is that a tip that every uh, engineer would give you is that if there's a piece of information in the problem, it's probably useful. Like, anything in the problem that's specific is probably there for a reason. So find the length of the longest palindrome instead of finding the longest palindrome is probably important for a reason. And it is. Because finding the length of the longest palindrome is pretty easy. Um, we just have to look at the properties of a palindrome and then we can figure it out. So what are the properties? Well, we have a D here and a D here. So matching character, matching character, matching character, and then not matching character. Okay, well I guess the only thing that we have to notice is that every character is matching except one character, one middle character, cannot be matching. And that's the only one. Other than that, every other character has to be matching, except for the very center. Because otherwise, it wouldn't be spelled the same way forward as backwards if there were different characters somewhere else. So we can only accept one different character. Well, if we realize these properties, then it's pretty easy after that point. All we have to do is, okay, let's get the count of each character in the string... For example, there's two D's, there's four C's, and then all we have to do is we make a count array, we put them in, and we just say, what is, um, if, if the character count of a current character is even, so if there's four, if there's two, if there's eight, then we could add up, we could just add that count on to an ongoing sum, right? Because if we have... You know, for if if it's divisible by two, if we have a character that um, the number of occurrences is even, then that can go right into our palindrome. If we have two Ds, that can go into our palindrome somewhere. You can just tag them onto the end. If we have four Cs, two of them on each side. So we just fill the count, and if we go through, and if they're even, we just add that count onto an ongoing sum. So we had four, we had two, that's six, and then. In the end, if we have leftover, if we have one, if we have one character that's just worth a value of one, if we, that occurs one time, or if we have you know three C's or like three B's or something like that, we can add that one extra one for the middle. So that's pretty much the idea here. Um, hopefully, you guys know what uh, char counts array is. So a char counts array is just a um, array to keep track of. 
the number of occurrences of a character. We're going to use ASCII values in this case because we have lowercase and uppercase letters. So to do this, all we have to do is for char c in string dot to char array. So we loop through all the characters in the string that we're given. So this string, for example, we access the index of the string by just passing in the value c, which is the character. So just passing in the c, it'll be converted to the ASCII index in this array. So if it's a lowercase a, it'll say, okay, char counts of 97 and then we increment the count. So we're just counting how many occurrences of each character. Great. Now we want to initialize our result. Like I said, this is the ongoing sum. We're going to loop through each integer in the char counts right now. So we could say char count or count or whatever. Yeah, we could say char count in char counts. Um, and then we would just do this. Okay, if char count is well actually we could do this we could just do result plus equals char count divided by two times two and what this is going to do is this is go if it was three if there were three a's and we're looping through it would do three divided by two which is one because this is integer division so we're getting the floor division of three divided by two so it removes the remainder from the division and then we multiply it by two again and we just get two. So this kind of does the, uh, this is just integer division, classic integer division, um, to add on any pairs that we see, any number that's divisible by two, we just add on, you know, if it was, um, you know, eight divided by two is four times two is eight, we'd add that onto the result because we have eight characters we could put in the palindrome. Anything divisible by two we could do. If it was nine, well, we would do nine divided by two, which would count as four times two is eight. So we'd add eight on. And then what we'll do is in the end, if there's a leftover one, so if result um, mod two is equal to zero. So if the result is an even number at the ver at any point, we can take and char counts um mod 2 is equal to 1 so this will say okay our result we have an even number of characters in the result right now um we have a perfect palindrome right now this is like fine but we don't have that extra unique character that we could put in the middle that one extra one well if the current character um has a remainder after dividing by 2 well, then that means there's an ex either an extra one, in the case like 3 divided by 2, that would be a remainder 1, or, um, you know, whatever, or if it was just a value of 1. So then we just do result plus equals 1. And, um, yeah, so that should actually be it. Yeah, that, that's it. It's a pretty easy problem. I might have uh, gone a little bit in depth Um when I didn't need to necessarily to string dot two char array s dot two char array sorry can I ever not make a mistake um, char count we're doing count in the loop there we go so that's it good runtime just a linear um, just linear and um, yeah thank you guys for watching let me know if you have any questions I went pretty in depth so I think you should be able to understand it but uh, thanks for watching hope you guys enjoy it. Get good at your palindromes. They come up a lot, actually, in interviews. So um, definitely got to know what a palindrome is. You got to know all this math. Uh, it's just integer division and remainders. But I tried to explain it as if this was for beginners. Anyway, talking too much. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye. See you.